Hi everyone, it's Taylor here today, and I'm going to share with you how I created this fun summertime card with a unique interactive twist. It all starts with our clear stamp set called Pool Party, which features a boy and a girl sunning themselves in floaties, and we have the coordinating dies for that stamp set. I will also be using the Cool Pool Rotating Stencil, which is a new product that creates that pool watery look. Then we also will be using the stitched banner stacklets, the second from the smallest size. And I'll be using the second from the largest size in our 100 plus freebie die this month that's called Frame and Frame 3. For inks, I'll be using Oreo, Versifying Claire in Nocturne, and Sprinkles with my blue blender brush. I will also be doing a little bit of embossing. So I have my Versamark and my powder tool and the Cookie Monster embossing powder. That's gonna be used with that rotating stencil to make that really unique pool look. Now we have some Copic markers to color the images. And then I have my Just Press tool and I'll be using glossy accents with sugar cube glitter, which is really an iridescent sparkly glitter that can be placed over the top of any color. I have my Milky Pop gel pen to add a few accents to the colored images. I will be making the interactive card using our on the right track discs and foam sticky circles along with glue dots, and then some regular foam sticky strips for popping the whole scene up. So we're gonna get started with the Cool Pool Rotating Stencil. Now this was designed, again, to rotate 180 degrees. So you first do your first application of ink, or in this case, I will be applying embossing powder first, and then you rotate the stencil 180 degrees, and it creates an offset of that design so that you get that sort of watery look with some of the accent colors being whatever base your whatever cardstock color your base is in this case i started with saltwater taffy cardstock you could also start with white as well is another great choice but i'm going to place that stencil down with the details in the bottom right corner and then i'm going to place the pixie spray or actually not pixie spray pixie tape down on the side now, because I'm going to be using embossing powder on this, I have decided to use my powder tool before I place the other side of the stencil down. So this powder tool is going to help keep the embossing powder only on the areas that I mark with my Versamark ink pad. So now when I fold that stencil back into place, I can place the pixie tape over on the other side to keep the stencil down in place. And then I'm going to take my Versamark ink pad. You could do this a couple of different ways. I'm actually just going to take the ink pad and go ahead and press it onto my stencil. So you could take a dauber and you could dauber the ink across. I don't particularly like to use my blender brushes for applying embossing ink like a Versamark. Um, so pressing the pad directly over the top works well for me. Now I am placing the Cookie Monster embossing powder over the top and heating that. You can see we've got a really fun reflective look starting with the glossiness of that embossing powder. I love using the embossing powder for the first layer and the Cookie Monster happens to be an amazing choice because it's that perfect teal color for a summer pool. So now I've rotated that stencil so you can see that the design falls in a slightly different spot and I'm going to blend with sprinkles ink over the top. So some of the portions are going to remain with the saltwater taffy that I used as the card base and some of them will turn the sprinkles color and then the others will be the cookie monster. Now I did forget originally to bring in my new ink stand. So we have just started carrying the ink stand at Tailored Expressions and this is awesome for keeping your ink pads in place while you're blending. So you can grab those at Tailored Expressions now as well. So now it's time to stamp the clear stamps onto sugar cube cardstock. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to use of the images. So I just put all of them onto a piece of sugar cube cardstock and stamped them down. I also have my stick and stamp mat to help keep those uh, papers in place while I am stamping with the clear stamps. Clear stamps tend to pull up my paper. So I really love using the sticky mat for that purpose. Now I am adding color with my Copic markers. You can see I've sped this up quite a bit so that you don't have to 
watch all of the detail of Copic coloring. I do have some other videos where I share a little bit more about shading, but I am starting with the lighter color and then using the darker color to add shadows and coming back with the lighter color to blend them together. I've added the blue in between her body and the floaty so that it mimics the color of the pool water because typically if you're laying in a floaty, you would be seeing the water underneath you as well. So now I'm going to take the coordinating dies and line them up around my colored images. I'll tape them down with scotch removable and send them through my die cut machine. I'll also be using the second largest frame in the frame and frame three die set to cut out from saltwater taffy. And then I'll be using that same die to cut out the stenciled piece that we did earlier in the video using that cool pool rotating stencil. I want these frames to line up exactly, which is why I've used the same die to cut in both colors. So now I'm going to take a small circle and I've lined that up over the inside of the frame that we just cut out. Now the circle is positioned exactly where I want my little girl to fall on my finished card. And this is how we're going to create the interactive element. I'm going to grab one of our foam sticky circles and essentially sandwich it in between two of our on the right track discs. So I'm taking that sticky circle, placing it in the center of a disc, and then sandwiching it with a second disc. Then I've placed a glue dot on the top and I can place my little colored image over it. And then I'm using our foam sticky strips on both of the frame and the inside so that they're popped up and our girl has some room to move and kind of float around the pool. Now I'm using a gel pen to highlight some of those images. I decided adding these white accents would just give a little bit of extra dimension to the pool imagery. And now I'm going to stamp the sentiment and it says go with the float. I realized after I stamped it the first time that I actually didn't give myself enough space with the die that I was planning to use. So I moved my cardstock over and stamped it a second time so that I could cut that flag out facing to the left there. So I made a little pencil mark, just the length that I wanted it, and now I'm ready to assemble the card. I decided to put the sunglasses on our sweet little girl, and then I added the beach ball, the floating drink holder, and also realized that I put on the pool ladder a little bit backwards. So I'll be changing that after the video. But you can see how she moves around and spins with the help of that disc. So last I have taken some of our glossy accents and placed sugar cube glitter over the top to add that perfect amount of sparkle. So I hope you enjoyed today's project and you learned a little bit about how to create a fun interactive card using our new pool party products. You can find all of these products at the Tailored Expressions web store at tailoredexpressions.com. And if you enjoyed today's video, hit the subscribe button below. See you next time.